All right, gentlemen, I am working on grading the DBQ that you did about emancipation in the Civil War. And I have noticed a, a number of errors in doc analysis in all aspects. So I am going to walk through these really quickly and, and, and try and maybe clear up some questions that I will get when people look at comments and grades, etc. Um, and also, I think, hopefully give you a few tips for moving forward, what you need to consider, okay? So, Doc 1, first of all, this is early Civil War, and I mean early Civil War, right? Um, and it is, you know, a news story, and it's a story that is being relayed that apparently, you know, eight runaway slaves came into a camp and asked, what are you going to do with us? And they say, we're not going to harm you, and, and there's this talk of how the next day more slaves came, and then more slaves came. Now, my source is, a, is, is the New York Daily Tribune. That's not important, honestly. What's important? Several things. The date. Very early on in the war. Second big thing you should have taken away from this. The fact that these men asked, what's going to happen to us? We're going to be sent back. What you know? How are we going to be treated? That goes to show that early on in the war, there was not a clear sense of abolition or emancipation or whatever you want to call it. Right? The fact that these escaped slaves questioned men in the Union Army as to what you will do to escape slaves very clearly states or shows that there was an ambivalence. There was an unknown factor. That there wasn't a clear, distinct view of emancipation up north. Right, or at least not that you know Southerners were aware of, um, and so that is that is something that I don't really know how many of you necessarily, but you know thus far no one has really touched on that. No one has said, "Oh man, really early on," and these guys are like, "What's going to happen to us?" That clearly shows it wasn't, you know, it wasn't this established concept or view, right? So. Um, date is important here, and then you have to look at, at what was said and then go, whoa, you know, because people are, people are mistaking purpose and audience and reason and all this. People are messing up that last thing. They're, they're trying to earn that last point desperately, right, because there's two points for, for historical situation, audience, purpose, etc., and everybody's throwing all sorts of stuff out there, right? People are just chucking stuff left and right, and people are missing left and right. Um, this is an example of where you could talk about um, tone, maybe, but honestly, this is one I wouldn't go for, right? I would just say, because it's early on, you know, and they say, we don't, you know, what are you going to, they ask the question, it clearly shows that there wasn't a very well-known established stance. Moving on. Abraham Lincoln proclamation regarding the military order of this general to emancipate slaves. Again, fairly early on in the Civil War really only about a year deep. The president is revoking a general's order to free the slaves in these areas, right? And then he says, no one has been authorized to do this. Um, I have asked states to cooperate, gradual abolishment, compensation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? Again, fairly early on, I mean, not, not this early, but fairly early on, right? Clearly showing that Abe Lincoln is not pushing abolition, right? Um, he's revoking an attempt to emancipate, right? Now, there's a few ways that I would have approached this. And by the way, too, I'm doing this instead of writing an essay. I know I keep writing these sample essays, like, here, here's what I would write. Well, let's, let me walk you through how, how I look at these, okay? Um, <clears throat> who's his audience? His audience is actually the border states. <laughs> it, it's hidden in there, but think about it. Abe Lincoln was desperate to not lose the border states. If he makes a hard push for emancipation, the border states are going to fall apart. I'm not saying they're going to break, but he's going to have civil war in Missouri. He's going to have a break in Kentucky. You know, He's going to have major issues. And he's, he's trying to offer the olive branch to the Southerners, right? Just come back, we'll work it out. You know, compensation and, and such. He, his audience is the border states in the South, right? And so he is, is taking a very conciliatory position. Look at the tone. 
he is he is smacking one of his generals right publicly so to speak for trying to emancipate people without it without proper authorization and then he goes on to I, you know i have tried to do all these things to meet you southerners halfway okay now that is a case where you have a, a ready-made you can look at audience purpose intent however you want to term it right document three is from frederick Douglass. Thus far, I have yet to see anyone mention – I shouldn't say thus far. I've, I've only seen a couple, right? Frederick Douglass is probably the most famous pre-abolition well, – it, ha- it would have to be pre-abolition. Um, he is the most famous slave. I, I mean, honestly. Um, right up there, I guess, would be Nat Turner um, because Nat Turner's revolt is highly taught. Everyone kn- – and Harry Tubman. Okay, your top three, Harry Tubman, Nat Turner, Frederick Douglass, right? You ask an American to name a slave. Those are the three names, okay? Very few people have, have, have done a good job of pointing out that who he was, right? But I wouldn't, honestly. I wouldn't. This is one that I wouldn't try and do the whole, oh, the author. The, I just say what's in here. It's a guy basically writing Abraham Lincoln. And saying, look, I know you've done a few things. You've done a few things, but you haven't pushed them, right? You've got the ability to recruit and enlist and arm freed men, right? Or runaway slaves or whatever. You know, people aren't opposing that. People are fine with it. It it passed by a wide margin. Do it. And by the way, while you're at it, why don't you issue an Emancipation Proclamation, right? Um, now, I would like to point out August 1862, Emancipation Proclamation issued September 1862. You know, so you could tie that in. You know, perhaps this was to put – to increase the public pressure on Abraham Lincoln to actually do it, and then it resulted in it. I don't know. Um, a bunch of people have missed this one. This is a runaway slave – well, it says formerly enslaved, but I'm going to assume a runaway. Um, in the 55th Massachusetts, writing to his wife. This is not to a pol- – this is a man writing his wife, okay? So all of you people who tried to associate some great purpose, it's a guy saying, I'm coming for you, and we will be free. Just read it, right? It's flowery. That's how people wrote, right? But he is telling you people are supporting emancipation, right? Um, and, and, you know, freed slaves are in the mix, and we're fighting, and you will be free, and we will strike down the system. That's all it is. There is not some great ulterior motive or political purpose. Lastly, Doc 5, very misunderstood by a number of you. This was one where it's like there was no middle ground. You either got it right or you missed it horribly. Open letter to friend, Illinois legislator, James Conklin. Okay. This is Abraham Lincoln talking to a man who opposes abolition or emancipation. Okay. Abe Lincoln is saying, you know, I understand you don't like my Emancipation Proclamation. You don't like the fact that I've been starting to agitate for freedom, etc. You don't even like the idea of compensating slave owners because you don't like your taxes being used to do so. But I think I did the right thing. I'm encouraging slaves to run away. I'm stripping the South of resources. I'm fighting the war. You know, it hurts the enemy. Um, but a lot of you misinterpreted or misunderstood what this document is saying, and and that was a little concerning. I mean, some of you said it was somebody writing writing Abe Lincoln. I actually remember a student said it was a Southerner writing Abe Lincoln. You've got to pay attention to this, okay? Because without this, you guys have no idea who, what, when. Right. This is the first thing you should look at with each doc. Okay. Um, I will talk about what I would recommend we do when it's AP test time. I'm going to make another video for both you and my MEHAP guys um, as to how I would do it. It's what it's what I would tell you to do if this was going to be an on paper, you know, Miss Brown in a classroom, old school. Um, but I'm I'm going to advise you all, you know, to have basically a scrap piece of paper. Where you're gonna, as you go through each doc really quickly, like who, to whom, you know, is the date significant, et cetera, like like a checklist, so to speak. But I just want to really quickly, here in about 10 minutes, kind of run through some of these docs and point out things that jumped off the page at me, right? When I went to 
when I was sitting there going, all right, I, I guess I'll write these guys a sample DBQ. If you're curious, yeah, I would have used them all. I wouldn't have done a two doc gambit. I could I could hit it out the park on this one, right? I would have mentioned how early on you got Friedman asking, you know, what's going to happen to us, which clearly shows ambivalence, like there wasn't a clear cut opinion. I would have mentioned how in this document Abraham Lincoln's purpose was to soothe concerns amongst both border states and to try and offer a carrot to the southern states that instead of straight up emancipation, he would offer compensation um, to get that that ex that extra point. Um, I would have just talked about you know what the stock said. Now here's where I would have got some outside evidence. I would have said this was written one month before the Emancipation Proclamation. So maybe it did influence or put pressure. You know, maybe it did have its effect. Who knows? Um, I would have included just a very quick uh, about this document. Um, and then on this one, this is another one where I would have tried to get the outside track, so to speak. Um, and on this one, I think I would have talked about how, again, um, in this document, the tone, the tone shows that Abraham Lincoln is trying to explain or justify that that he has come to emancipation, you know, because my thesis would have been emancipation was a, a reluctant final step, right? My thesis would have been basically we started the war. Emancipation was like talked about it, but it wasn't a war aim. It became a war aim. And this is a great example of Abraham Lincoln kind of walking someone through it, right? He talks about it, and he's like, look, I tried all these things, and finally, to win this war, I had to emancipate, right? Um, but so I wanted, to, I wanted to, again, throw this out there. If people disagree, have questions, please email. Um, but I, I saw a lot of misinterpretation, misunderstanding, you know, people, people messing up this part, not just the text, but, you know, who wrote it, when it was written, et cetera. People are claiming all sorts of purposes. And, and and meanings and stuff that just aren't there. I think people are grasping at straws for points, and it's actually hurting them, and we need to get away from that.